Jesus, give us your heart. Oh God, you promised to meet us where we are and take us to where you are. Holy Spirit, there are some who are not where they need to be. There's some who struggle with their daily walk. God, be gracious with them. Building us a prayer life, make our lives a not just a living sacrifice, but an altar where, you're, where the offerings of praise and thanksgiving can occur. Make our hearts that altar where we offer up thanksgiving. Jesus, may your words just flow. Let nothing of me, nothing of us that is spoken stick, but only that which is of you take firm root to bear not just more fruit, but more trees producing more fruit, which produce more trees to a thousand generations, because they're your words and they endure forever. Lord, I need your help. You know our bodies are frail, and you uphold us by the word of your power. We trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you want the anguish of God? Do you want the anguish of God? Do you know what the anguish of God is? Go ahead and look at a baby's eyes. That's his anguish. He says, that child belongs to the devil and I want that child back. People who have done you wrong. Yeah, you spat on my cornflakes. You're a baloney stinker. Yeah, Christ died for that person. What about the land where you're at, where someone died years ago, and nobody said, here on earth, I'm so sorry, Lord, that somebody killed innocent blood here. I'm so sorry for the wickedness that was done on this property. I remit the sin of that property. Go to Mark 16. talking earlier, and what is our responsibility? What, what ought we do? Our responsibility is this. God created everything by the word of his power. That's Psalm 19, I believe. In Rome. He holds everything by his word. In him, all things hold together. That's Colossians. Colossians 1. Mark 16, verse 15. Then he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every person. That's not what that says. Preach the gospel. To the whole creation. In six days, God created heaven and earth and rested on the seventh. Looked back and said it was very good. You guys understand that we have the authority as sons and daughters of God, living representatives of Jesus Christ, to stand and remit sin. I love him. I stand against all evil against his creation. We neglect it. We neglect this important task. We know Romans 8, all creation groans in travail, in childbirth, until the revealing of the sons of God. He says, preach the gospel to the whole creation. Now he says, whoever believes 
and he's baptized, he'll be saved. Okay, I'm not going into if they believe and then they die before they get baptized. I'm not dealing with that issue. But whoever believes and is baptized is saved. And, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak in new languages. They will pick up snakes. If they should drink anything deadly, it will never harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. I'm not advocating go and start picking up vipers. He says, if. He says, they, it'll happen. Things won't happen to them. They won't affect them. They won't destroy them. That's our responsibility, is to preach the good news that now creation is set free. It's to preach, to go, and to act as God did where he spoke things into existence. He speaks life into a situation. He puts his hand, just as Jesus did, puts his hand on someone and says, be healed. Now, everything must fall under his lordship. If someone is not healed right away or they're just flat out not healed, that's not your call. Your responsibility is to go and pray. Your responsibility is to go and touch. Your responsibility is to go and minister. Your responsibility is to go and preach the gospel. What's, if you don't understand what the gospel is, say, Lord, show me what the gospel is. Show me how to live it, how to walk it. Christ in you is the gospel. In the garden, we had God next to us. After the garden, we have God you know, after the cross. But the second garden of the garden tomb, we have Jesus in us to outflow, outflow rivers of living water. Why are we doing that? That's his anguish. He sees every cursing person, every person that's reviling him. He looks at them and he says, I died for you. He says, I'm ready for you. Please let me in. Do you understand they're going to hell? They're going to Christless eternity. We don't need to look to the Sentinelese people untouched all the way over in India. We got them in our backyard. I'm guilty because humanly, I, I, they're people I just don't want to associate with. And God says, go. Nice. Okay. Yes, sir. Christ died for me. You need to pray for Aunt Matilda McGillicuddy. She, oh, bless her heart, she had this and she had that, and she's a horrible person, and it is. But, but God love her. We, you know, we need to pray for her. Yeah, so you talk about praying, you didn't pray. Mm. How many times have we done that? Mm. We talk about praying, but we don't pray. We don't say, Jesus, I'm sorry. I've not prayed for this person. You love them more than you love. You love them so much. You are ready to give, and they're not even ready to receive. Please heal them. That's his anguish. Is eternity without him. He would have it that none should perish, but all come to repentance. Amen. That's what he wants. That's his anguish. His anguish is, I created it, and it's going to hell. And I don't want that. If you don't have that anguish, let me speak some hard words and say you may be spinning your wheels with what you're doing. You may be rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. The human soul is the most precious thing we can handle. Leonard Ravenhill said that. They are the only treasure that moth and rust do not corrupt nor destroy. They're the precious souls of our children. They're the precious souls of our neighbors. They are those who revile us, who want nothing to do with us, who threaten us, and flat out, they don't want us in their presence. Now, if, if they say, get out of my face, don't ever come here again, honor that. Write them down in your book and we pray for them. Mm -hmm. I've seen miracles. But I've had people curse me. And the Lord said, pray for him. I said, Lord, I don't want to. He said, I don't care. Okay. And sure enough, they come back and we embrace as friends. Miracles. The greatest miracle is not healing from cancer. The greatest miracle is not being raised from the dead, physical death. The greatest miracle is a changed heart. 
because God is the one who changes hearts. Look at Pharaoh. He hardened his heart. He changes hearts. That's what he does. That's the miracle working nature of God. He is the, as the scripture says, the Lord of all spirits. Should we not be subject to the Lord of spirits and live? So how does that look? Well, go to Ephesians 4. I'm still wondering how this is connecting, but apparently the Lord is bringing connection, so we'll just... Hearing comes, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So, just go with it. Ephesians 4.11 And he personally gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For the training of the saints in the work of ministry. That word there is not paid service. It's not a job. Ministry means sacrifice. Mm. Amen. To build up the body of Christ. Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son, growing into mature man with a stature measured by the world's... Stat no, I don't say that. Sorry, I like to do that every now and then. Sort of keep you on your toes. The army would say, stay alert, stay alive. Measured by Christ's fullness. Then we will no longer be little children, tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching. <coughs> by human cunning and with cleverness in the techniques of deceit. Guys, there's a lot of stuff out there. Clever. You need good teaching. I've heard that. I've been around it. You need good, solid teaching. Good, solid teaching is Jesus, and then you end up... What's the point? And you're deceived into thinking that the, the most Christian thing you can do is get good teaching. Revival tarries because one, we don't pray, two, we don't do. We don't act in faith. He says, I seek those who worship in spirit and truth. Spirit, that's prayer. Truth, that means you go out and do what, what you pray for. Fully believing that God said, you, God will equip you based on what you've asked. How's your prayer life? Are you allowing the Lord to rebuke you on a daily basis? Are you pliable? Are you bendable? Are you moldable? Are you clay that is moldable because there's water in you. Water is, you know, the Holy Spirit and water, water is picture of the Holy Spirit. Or are you so lacking spirit that now, if he goes, clink, and you're broken to pieces? Where are you? Where's your anguish? Where's your concern for, where's concern for your own souls? Lord, am I growing into a mature man or woman with a stature measured by Christ's fullness? What's Christ's fullness? Him in the presence of God. Resurrection. Woo! That's his fullness. Is the resurrection is the res resurrected Christ. Where death has no hold on him. Hallelujah. Does death have a hold on you? <coughs> is there concern about the future in you? Whether the things of the world are going to affect you? Or do you walk through the valley of the shadow of death fearing no evil? knowing that he is with you. It's not an easy message. It's not an easy message for me to give. But by the same token, we ought to encourage every one of us to greater and greater maturity. Those of you who have children, do you listen and observe how your children act just just, just, just watching and carefully observing them and seeing how they respond and say, Lord, am I acting like that? Lord, what are you trying to tell me through my children? They're mirrors. Yeah. Even a child can make himself known by whether his conduct is good or not right. Proverbs. Those children are given to you from God as a mirror 
to show you your insufficiency and to drive you to the cross. Those children are a blessing, and you better treat them as such. They're to teach you, okay, God, how am I acting that way with you? Husbands and wives, how you act with each other is how you act with the Lord, period. If you're not listening to your wife, I'm sorry, you're not listening to God. Wives, if you're not loving your husband, you're not loving God, period. Guilty. You have the same problem. Children, you're not obeying your parents, you're not obeying God, period. The most pleasing thing you can do, obey God simply. Obey your parents. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, lift up your husbands. Bless them. Say, honey, how can I help you with what you're doing? Husbands, wives, honey, how do I love you? Where do you need me? Get yourself a pad, get yourself a pencil, something, and say, Lord, how do I love my wife? Husband, wives, how do I love my husband? How do we do this better? Because as you do it day by day, there's so much going on. There's, there are distractions ad nauseum. We have enough work in our own home to build up in the maturing of Christ. Do you understand? You can preach the gospel right in your own home and you can spend all day preaching the gospel right there. Do you understand that now as a family, when you go out to the world, you're ready to speak. You're ready to preach the gospel. You just walk out the gospel and people will see the light. They will see. And you've done nothing. You've said word none. But you've been building up your family. It starts in the home. Malachi 4. In the last days I'll turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. And the hearts of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and strike the land with a terrible curse. We have fathers in this country that don't give two stinks about their kids. Anyone can be a father. But it takes a real man to really be a dad, a parent. And those of you who don't have children, or, grand or you have grandchildren, how are you building them up as children? How are you encouraging them in grace? Children need grace. All the chaos that's out there in the world, I'm sorry, they're just children. It's just that simple. They're just big, sophisticated, and do a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Millions of dollars of worth and a lot of blood spilled. Mm -hmm. But if you boil it down, they are just children without a parent. And God the Father has sent Jesus Christ to empower us to be their parents and to love on them as a parent, building them up so that nobody is taken captive. That we speak the truth in love. To Now he's talking to the church. Let us grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. From him the whole body fitted and knit together by supporting ligament promotes the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. The anguish of God. Do you have it? Do you want it? How bad? Does it hurt? Do you want Jesus? Do you just want him to provide for you? If that's fine, let him be your blessing machine because he'll knock it down real quick. And he'll say, are you ready for me now? And you will want him. Do you want to look like Jesus? Do you want to grow and grow up? Or stay put where you are? Because I'm sorry, if you stay put where you are, there's only two directions if you look at plants. If we, if we didn't have any Bibles, Romans says that all of creation is out of it. You'll be a tree that grows up and starts flowering and flourishing. Or you could just stay there. And then, you know, I mean, I lost a couple trees on, on the property. I lost a maple tree. Some gophers got into it. But you couldn't tell until you look at it. They, they had little sprouts. But you're like, you know, you should be further along. What's going on? And I sort of pull on it. And it got out from the roots. I lost lilacs and the maple tree. 
and the Lord showed me there were other trees that I could see you know green leaves and one of them had some plum blossoms it's like the Lord is telling me something got to the roots guys has something got to your roots where there's no growth where there's no transformation looking more like Christ guys get back to the roots of the gospel Amen. it is that simple it is really simple like a child can pick it up Jesus loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so it is that simple we don't need anything more than Christ and him crucified Amen. living in you it is, it's really that simple what else do you need we say Christ is enough for me really is he enough or are you still trying to understand this and understand that? Look, he says in John, the whole, I will send the Holy Spirit. He'll teach you all things. Everything you need to know is there. He'll teach you. You don't need to keep searching. He'll say, this is what you need to do. As you go along the way, as you obey him, teaching comes. It's the apprenticeship model. We complicate things in the West. We try to separate your school and then you go out and do these other things and everything is segmented. It's a waste of time. Here's where it comes to, is holiness. Looking like Jesus. Do you look like Jesus? I can't answer that. But that's between you and the Lord. Have you sought his face? That's between you and the Lord. Say, Jesus, do I look like you? And... I had my second crisis in, in April of 2019. A lady by the name of Helen Ewan, she was an absolute quote unquote nobody. Quiet, simple, but she was a radiant being. She would walk into a room, everybody's quiet and praying, she just sits there quietly. They perk up and they said, Helen Ewan just walked in the room. She would stop by the street and Say and just share some things of the Lord and people would fall on their faces weeping because they said we just saw Jesus mm. when she died at the age of 22 missionaries from all over the world wrote back saying who will pray for us mm. a great soldier has fallen a great general has fallen in battle even the a common graveyard in Scotland she changed the face of Scotland where Dr. James Stewart had a ministry over in North Carolina, still going. He, he asked um, if, he, if, if they remember burying Helen Ewan. He said, sir, the, the gravekeeper was a pretty burly guy. He said, sir, this is a common grave. We, we bury a lot of people. And Dr. Stewart kept asking some more questions. And the gravekeeper, big, and just started tearing up. He said, I remember that day, sir. There was a mighty move of God when she was buried. And I saw that. I read that tract. She was only 22. I was broken. We got to hear Brother Ramon's second crisis testimony of how he was delivered from cynicism, criticism, selfishness, being sanctimonious, holier than thou, because he was not transformed. I was not transformed. And I said, oh Lord, here, here I am trying to preach and do all this godly stuff. I have the knowledge of God. There is little power. And I said, Lord, I am not transformed like that woman is. You've got to transform me. I'm sorry I'm not looking like you, Jesus. I don't have your anguish. I lost it. I had it in 2011 when I got called into the ministry. But it slowly faded away because I was critical and cynical and did not love his creation, did not love the souls of men and women, regardless of how I felt. That's what that anguish is about. It's Hebrews 12, 14 that says, pursue holiness. Pursue peace with all men. <coughs> and holiness for the without which no one may see the Lord. You're not going to see Jesus unless you allow him to burn up in you. Everything that's not him. 
if you have to take time, this is what Shavuot was for. We, we call it let the fire fall because that's what Leanne wanted. We, we prayed about it and said let the fire fall. We believe the fire fell. Individuals. The fire is falling. Burning people up. Burning their dross. He's making an am segula, a treasured possession, treasured people. A people that don't fear death. They don't fear criticism or slander. They don't fear disobedience. They don't feel fear, failure. And they're willing to meet it head on and say, okay, Lord, my flesh messed up. I am in your house. How do I look more like you? Please change me, transform me. If you have to get alone and go into a little wilderness time, bring it before the Lord. And, and I will challenge you. There will be times where he says, cancel responsibilities. I'll take care of it. That's, that's between you and the Lord. I can't, I can't say that. I will say, go, don't put God in a box. I spoke to a ministry leader of a very well-known ministry. She had responsibilities galore. And God says, three months, you're not talking to anybody. No ministry, nothing. I'm getting you alone. If that has to happen, what do you want more? The heart of God or your routine? It's very hard. But I'll tell you what, you get God, there's nothing else you'll want. When you find out Christ is all you have, you'll realize Christ is all you need. And Christ becomes all you want. Yeah. It's a good road. It's a very good road. It leads to life. But it's not for the faint-hearted. The, fu the fire has to fall. If we say in Christ be magnified. If the cross brings transformation, I'll be crucified with you. If you're there in the fire, I will be there too. You've got to want it. You've got to let it hurt. I'm not talking masochism. I'm talking sharing in joy, in difficulty, with the king of the universe who died for you. That's what this is talking about. And he says, okay, I died, I rose again. Now go do as I did. I'm not suggesting physical death. Your heart has to be there. You've got to preach the message. It's got to be part of you. If you don't understand it, you say, Lord, write your word upon my heart because I don't understand it. Let him teach you. Let him walk with you. Walk with him and, 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 and just realize Romans 8 1, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You are free to fail. Don't you think the disciples failed at Pentecost? They got out. They started preaching. They didn't get it all right. But they were hardcore for the Lord. And you know what? It is by that mess that the kingdom of God is spread. If I may recommend one book by George Verwer, Messiology, where he recognizes, you know what? If everybody is seeking Jesus Christ, you know what? We're going to make mistakes along the way. That's fine. That's how the kingdom of God is spread. Your Father in heaven, thank you for your words of life, for your message, for all of us to have your anguish, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He came, he died, he rose from the dead. And he sent his Holy Spirit as a testimony to live inside us, very nature of God in us, to do as you do. Father, I pray that we would continue learning only about the gospel. There's nothing else we need to learn. Everything else is just a byproduct of the gospel in our lives. To some it's being a doctor, to some it's being a mom, to some it's being in ministry of a physical capacity, to some it's being a carpenter, Jesus, the gospel will have its effect upon us. Romans 1, the gospel is the power of God, of salvation. Jesus, teach us now the gospel. Teach us now how to live it. Teach us now how to walk it. Ply our, make our hearts and our ears pliable to obey simply. In Jesus' name, amen.